Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today, I'll be starting with one of my new series, which is uh, basically introductions to various post-colonial studies books, mostly fiction. Uh, my engagement with the theory is already covered in my playlist in uh, you know, post-colonial theory and post-colonial concepts. So today I'll be talking about a really important response novel, The White Sarugaso Sea uh, by Jean Rees, and a little bit about the author. Uh, Jean Rees was born uh, on the island of Dominica, which is in West Indies of European parents with a Scottish father uh, and a Creole, white Creole mother. No Creole, the term Creole is pretty complex, but it applies to anyone uh, of African descent or European descent born on the island. So Reese herself came from the, the white Creole population and uh, she lived in uh, the West Indies until I think she was 18 and then went for her studies to England and spent most of her life there. The novel, uh, White Saragasso C, if uh, according to the research into her personal letters was a deeply intentional work written in response to uh, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. And there is a place in one of her letters where Reese actually declares, talks about Bertha Mason and says, who is this woman? You know, I would like to tell her story. And then she spends 25 years writing this response now. A lot of people who have read it, a lot of critics who have read it would tell you that this is one of the most economical novel. There is nothing redundant in the novel. It's a novella. And she diligently worked on it for 25 years until she thought that it was perfect. So it's a great example of a carefully written novella. Now, uh, coming over to the plot, uh, before I go in there, I mean, how is it a response novel? In a way, it is a prequel to Jane Eyre. So we know in Jane Eyre, our main character is Jane Eyre, whom we meet in the very beginning of the novel. And it's the story of her struggle to make her own life. And then eventually her affair with Rochester, who lives in Thornfield Hall. He is a successful businessman. And then they, it's the story of their romance, right? But within that, as Jane is working at his house, she encounters on the second floor this apparition, this figure, this almost mad woman. And that's when she learns that this is Rochester's uh, you know, current and Caribbean wife. And uh, within that novel, uh, the wife eventually accidentally maybe burns down the house and that's what prompts Rochester's return to Jane. But she's only introduced there as this woman called Bertha Mason and we only know her as the mad woman in the attic. We don't have her backstory. So this novel makes Bertha Mason into a living character because Reese gives her her backstory. Where did she come from? Where did she grow up? What kind of a human being she was? And how did she end up being in England? So the plot of the novel from A to B, it's in three parts. The first part is narrated by our protagonist, Antoinette, who would eventually become Bertha Mason. And it still tells the story of her early life her mother Annette's struggles, her second marriage, then, you know, the illness of her mother, mental illness of her mother, and concludes in she being uh, in, in the convent school and becoming an adult. That's part one told by Antoinette, who is the main character. Part two is narrated by an unnamed male, and we can extrapolate that that's Rochester who has come to the Caribbean looking for a wife and has an agreement with uh, Antoinette's 
half brother and eventually ends up marrying her but the this part of the story is told from his point of view as he marries his creole wife and they go into dominican uh, countryside at one of the houses that Antoinette has inherited as part of their honeymoon and then the struggle in this part is he trying to figure out you know what kind of a person his wife is he developing suspicions about his wife he getting jealous and then deciding to move back to England along with his wife. And part three is the shortest part of the book, but we are in the mind of Internet who has been kept in an attic, considered to be mad, right? And we are in her mind where she is recalling her life, but she also is looking around and seeing how she got there. Uh, there are references to visit her, of her uh, half brother who tells us her that there is nothing he can do because of legal reasons and towards the end of the novel is where we are in her mind as she decides to sneak out of her confinement into the house and she is holding a candle and we can surmise that she has finally decided well, uh, I mean the sentence is this is why I was brought here. So maybe she knows that she has to burn down the house. So that's where the novel ends. This is simply the plot. The setting of the novel uh, in terms of space, uh, we start in Jamaica uh, in a small estate, very close to the former capital of Jamaica. And uh, then we move into Spanish town you know, where she grows up in the convent. And then after her marriage, we are in uh, Dominica, where they spend their honeymoon. And then at the end, towards the end of the novel, the story, the narrative takes place in England uh, at specifically Thornfield Hall. In terms of time frame, the story is set in uh, early 1830s. So temp temporarily, it would be, of course, before the time frame of Jane Eyre. The main characters, I would say Annette, uh, Antoinette's mother, is a main character because we meet her in the beginning. She and her daughter are almost living in poverty at, uh, at an old estate which no longer has the resources to sustain itself. Her first marriage was with Mr. Causeway, her second marriage was with Mr. Mason, which gives some stability to her, but then she loses, um, not her mind, but I mean, she has what we could call a deep depression, but she's put into the care of two people who treat her terribly, and, and that's where she dies. Our main character, Antoinette, we meet her in the first part of the novel, and it is her story her Creole upbringing, her encounters with the local culture, with the European culture, as well as her marriage and, you know, uh, her death towards the end of the novel. Then we have Christophine, who was given to Annette at her wedding. She is from Martinique, so was Annette. And she is this powerful native woman be a woman who knows magic, who can see the future. And she is throughout the novel, Antoinette's main supporter. And she is the one who constantly reminds the, the unnamed male character, Rochester, to not do injustice to Antoinette. Uh, but she's this powerful figure. She's not trusted by the native servants in Jamaica, but they are afraid of her. And she's the one who mentors internet throughout her life until internet leaves for England. Um, major themes in the novel, there could be quite a few, but to me what stands out is of course the presence of colonialism. Uh, this is a colonized society in which the white Creoles, maybe they make part of the local elite, but there are also Af African Creole populations and when we meet her, the system is still governed by the British law, right? And 
in a way the novel stages for us not only the divide between the non-white natives and their European counterparts, but also the divide between the white Creoles and the native black population, as well as their relationships with England when they're English people. Um, race plays a huge role. We learn about the racial relationships between the white Creoles and uh, the black population, which is somewhat hostile and based in distrust, of course, because, you know, the Creole population mainly were the slaveholders. And then we learn of the relationship of the Creole, the white Creoles, the island Europeans, and their desire to send their daughters in marriage to England and their relationships with England. The power of gender or the gender roles is huge. Now, one of the reasons Antoinette's position becomes so precarious when she goes to England, not simply because she's isolated and away from her original culture, is because legally, at that time in England, women could not own property. And since she could not own property, all the wealth that she had inherited becomes that of her husband's. And so absolutely she has no rights to hold on to her property or to even make a decision at her own. And that is also at the core of the novel because the novel is also telling the story of the second sons of noble families or merchant families who didn't inherit anything from their own families who would go to the Caribbean and marry a Creole woman and get a dowry. And it's that dowry that would start their businesses and their careers. So overall, uh, I think more than race and colonialism, it's the gendered role of women and the rights that they do not have especially in terms of the European or Creole characters and our main protagonist, that is one of the major themes of the novel. Uh, certain other themes could be, uh, you know, like uh, the relationship between poor Creoles and, and Black inhabitants, the relationships between former slaves who have been freed but have not been absorbed into the local economy, and then the tensions between the native population itself, like Christophine, who is not from Jamaica, her tensions with the natives, Daniel's character, who has this absolute hatred for Antoinette and tries to destroy her uh, through by uh, insinuating that she had had a relationship with Sandy. All of these things make part of uh, the novel. So overall, I mean, to conclude, uh, this is a response novel written in response to Jane Eyre. And it tells the story of Bertha Mason as internet. And if we read White Saragossa see carefully, the novel makes Bertha Mason, whom we know as an apparition, as this mad woman in Jane Eyre in Bronte's novel, who becomes a living, breathing human being to us. And we also then learn the backstory of how Rochester got his wealth, how so many other Europeans, if we can extrapolate from that, got their wealth from the Caribbean and depended on it. So these are some of the ideas that I have about the novel. Now, if you have any questions, anything that you would like to add, please post it in the comments. I'll probably also have a write-up about that on my website, and I'll post a comment to that here too. If you like this series or any of the other videos, please do subscribe. And if uh, you have any questions, feel free to send them my way. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.